So we're live. Welcome to Teaching Training Sessions 2020, organized by Sección de Idiomas de la Facultad de Humanidades USAC, Embajada de los Estados Unidos en Guatemala, and Asociación de Jóvenes Ex Becarios del Departamento de Estado, AGEDE. My name is Rosie Lopez, and I'll be hosting this conference. Thank you so much for being with us. Before starting these are some general instructions for you to follow. Number one, we will have 10 minutes for questions and answers at the end of the conference, in which I will be reading every question and comment you post directly in the live chat. Number two, don't forget to subscribe to both our channels, Idioma Susac and TTS conferences, so you can stay tuned on all conferences we'll have during the week. Again, thank you so much for joining us in the conference. TPAC, a dynamic framework for technology integration in the classroom, in charge of Master Hector Palala, whom we warmly welcome in the name of the Organizing Commission, TTS 2020. Hector Palala is from Guatemala. He holds a Bachelor of Arts, double major in Pedagogy and Educational Administration and High School English Language Teaching from Universidad de San Carlos de Guatemala. He was also granted with a Master's of Arts in Development Studies focused on children and adolescents from Universidad Rafael Andiva, and a Master of Arts in Education, Teaching and Learning with Technology from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where he is currently pursuing a PhD in Curriculum Studies and New Technologies in Education. He worked as Professor of Pedagogy, Didactic, Introduction of Critical Thinking, Literary Theory, Literature of the United States, EFL, and Philosophy of Education in the Humanities Faculty at Universidad de San Carlos de Guatemala. He has also worked as a teacher of various grade levels, demonstrating commitment and responsibility in these positions. He is certain that education and new technologies help our teachers and students to become proactive in their own development in a vibrant society. He will contribute and help Guatemala become competitive as it pursues further improvements in the field of education. His research is toward literacy programs in indigenous languages, pedagogy of tenderness, and artificial intelligence for education. He teaches and he stands for justice, dignity, and human rights. Again, welcome everybody to the conference, TPAC, a dynamic framework for technology integration in the classroom. Master Palala, the time is all yours. Thank you, Rosie, for this introduction. It's my pleasure to be here in the section of idiomas. And I miss all the students back in Guatemala, and I'm ready to start. Welcome everyone who is attending this conference today. I will share the screen. And as you know, you will also be able to see this uh, presentation under the comments in YouTube channel. Uh, I will ask you to have this link with you so you can be able to have this presentation in the future. Also uh, in the chat, in the YouTube channel, you will have also a link to a Google slide. And I would like you to choose one of the slides and read instructions there while we are going to start talking. So we're going to go there in the middle of the presentation. So I want you to start writing your name, choose one of the slides, write your name, and I will let you know later what or how we are going to this activity. Thank you so much. So TPAC, TPAC has a, a dynamic approach for technology integration in the classroom. Uh, so I know some of the teachers in Guatemala are using, most of the teachers are using technology integration uh, to enhance uh, ESL classes or EFL classes. But sometimes we don't know the theory behind the technology we are using. So I really like to give you this, uh, some highlights about this framework, which I think is very, very useful for all teachers in all mayors. You will see how and why I said that. So the session overview, what is my goal? My goal is to present this TPAC integration technology framework, the EFL classroom that systematically develops English teacher skills to select technologies to use in their classroom that enhance what to teach, how to teach, and how students learn. Uh, we are teaching these days in our plan or 
we are teaching our lessons, we are planning our classes, thinking about our students, not just about the teacher. So when we are thinking about also TPAC, it's going to be always about our own students. So I hope you're ready to start. TPAC. TPAC is a technology integration framework. Is it, what is framework? A framework is a structure, it's a line, it's a, a guide that teachers will need or we use to plan, to teach, or to uh, explore. In this case, in this topic, TPAC will help us to understand a little bit more about technology, but also it's not just to make technology the most important thing in your classroom. It's about three elements that connected become seven. And you will see why. So you can see in this graphic, we have the technological pedagogical context knowledge that it's called TPAC. What is TPAC? TPAC is the three, these three areas of teaching. We have the technological knowledge, the content knowledge, and the pedagogical knowledge. So what is it? And you will see how you are using it without knowing it. So TPAC identifies three types of knowledge structures need to uh, combine for successful ed tech integration. So when we talk about pedagogical knowledge, technological knowledge and content knowledge is what we are thinking when we're writing our lesson plans. The pedagogical knowledge is everything you use to teach your methodologies, uh, the approaches in the ESL class or EFL classes as when we are teaching all the second languages, uh, we need to learn approaches or methodologies of how to teach, reading, writing, or speaking and listening. So we choose the best for our students. We choose the best for our content, but also we can use the best methodologies according with the technology we have. So that's why it's important to know about the technological knowledge. The technological knowledge is all the knowledge you have about technology. It's about the computers, PowerPoint presentations, the Moodles, all the platforms you have been able to explore these days. And the content knowledge is what you are going to teach. In our case, we have a lot of content to teach. Sometimes you are, in an English classroom, and you are going to teach grammar today. That's your content. It can be also um, your content speaking or phonetics or how to run an essay. That's your content. But how content, technolo technology, and pedagogy are all together to make you a, as a whole complete teacher. We're going to separate them. Let's go back again with this picture. Um, the technological pedagogical content knowledge called TIPA. As you can see, we have the technological knowledge that goes close to the content knowledge, the pedagogical knowledge. So in these intersections, we have our technological knowledge and content knowledge becomes technological content knowledge. And we're going to talk about this later on. We're going to talk about also pedagogical content knowledge. And we're going to talk about technological pedagogical knowledge. So it's like a tongue twister, but it's not that difficult. You will see. We're gonna do some practice. So we are going to know or see how to use this framework in our lesson plans. Because you already are you already using this. Uh, technology in your classes, you know how to teach, but in a way of using the framework, it's gonna be easier for you to choose the best technology for your classes. Let's go. So what is content knowledge? As I was saying at the beginning, the, it's the teacher's knowledge about the subject matter to be learned. Some English teachers are asked to teach math, science, in other classes. That is your content area. It's not just English. Uh, some of you are going to teach in one school just speaking and another teacher will be teaching just grammar. That's gonna be your content. So you know the content, you know the specific rules about what 
you want to teach to your students. Okay, that's the content. Uh, if I'm gonna teach about vocabulary, so that's my content knowledge. Vocabulary about what? So we have specific topics about vocabulary. Imagine we're going to teach about family. So my content knowledge in this lesson plan will be vocabulary about family, okay? So now I want you to use your slide. Remember I asked you to write your name, choose one of the slides, And let's see how you go there. Okay, I want you to use this slide deck to start writing your thoughts about the topic we are talking about. So choose please one of the slides, write your name, and right now just write your content area. But remember, the instructions start in the number one, okay? Slide number one. This slide number one says instructions about the feedback. Add a slide to this deck, okay? Just one slide. One slide is about you, okay? We're going to make the feedback as your own approach. So add a slide to this deck. So you choose one, write your name. If you don't want to write your name, write your nickname. It's okay. Less words. So I want you to use multimodal text. What is multimodal text? Oh, multimodal texts are words that use more than just words and letters to communicate. So I want you to use pictures. I want you to use videos, music, photographs, drawings, when you are taking notes. You can actually use your slide. Okay, this is mine. This is Hector's slide. And I want to use a picture, video, and another picture to explain the instructions. So what I want you to do, okay, is to use your slide deck to write your ideas about the TPAC in your own way. So use pictures, videos, or drawings. How can we add pictures to the slide deck? Some of you are familiar with Google Slides. If you are not familiar with Google Slides, it's gonna be easy. So in this, you go to the left corner at the top and you have to use actually this insert, okay? When you use insert, you have to choose one of the images that they will be asking you to use. Let me know if you are able to use these icons and you can actually add pictures to your slide. So the first one I want you to do is to choose one of the pictures, okay? That explains your content knowledge, okay? You have one minute. Image, you research or upload from your computer Okay, the first one I want you to use is one picture. One picture that tells me what is your content area, your content knowledge, okay? So your content knowledge is what you are teaching right now. So choose one of the pictures. have one minute to do it. Let me know. You have some issues with the link or it's not working.
will. Um, okay, thank you, Rossi. Thank you. If we take time, thank you. <laughs> take time because we have more than 200 people using slide deck right now so don't worry if you cannot use it uh right away so just try to to remember okay choose the picture to show the content knowledge the content knowledge is what you're going to teach and then the pedagogical knowledge teachers deep knowledge about the process and practices or methods of teaching and learning do you remember any method you learn how to teach English, how to teach grammar, how to teach writing, listening, and speaking. So those are your pedagogical knowledge. Okay, those are those specific things because when we are going to choose one of the topics to teach tomorrow, you need to think what methodologies are the best for this topic. Oh, I think this one is going to be good. Oh, maybe if I start with just this warm up, teaching them the vocabulary without telling them. Uh, what we are going to teach. So they can discover the topic during the, the time we are teaching. So this is your pedagogical knowledge. So choose one of the pictures. It's gonna be slow because a lot of people are using it right now, but try to remember. First is the content, one picture that shows your content. The second picture is about your pedagogical knowledge. Okay, your pedagogical knowledge is what methodology do you use in that specific content you are thinking about? Imagine you are thinking about the content of writing an essay a picture, pedagog uh, pedagogical knowledge, how you're gonna start teaching how to write an essay. What is the best way? Reading an essay, explore, paragraph by paragraph, sentence by sentence. What is the best approach, uh, approach to teach that? This is an, a second picture. The third picture is about the technological knowledge. What do you know about technology, okay? Remember, technology is not just what we imagine it is. There are a lot of definitions of technology, a lot of philosophies to embrace technology. One of the most famous philosophies about technology for myself that I take in, in consideration is like everything can be technology. Everything. It's, like, what? it's not just the computer. It's not just the... Uh, uh, YouTube, everything can be technology. That's the philosophy I follow. What is your philosophy on your own technology? What is technology for you? I'm not going to change the way you think about technology. I want you to embrace your own way of seeing technology. And from there, start planning your classes. Otherwise, if you don't embrace your own philosophy of technology or your own way of thinking or ideas about technology, that won't make any sense. For example, in my philosophy of technology, this is technology. This is technology. If I can show this. This can be also technology. So choose your philosophy of technology and choose one of the pictures. What is your philosophy of technology? What is, so, in this definition, Kaller and Mishra are the ones, are the fathers of this framework. So they have the definition about technological knowledge. It's the certain ways of thinking about and working with technology tools and resources. So it's for teaching is how we work with technology, how we make classes interactive with technology, how do we communicate, communicate with our students by using technology. So all those things, according with technology, will help you to build up your own framework, okay? Let's go back again. Right now you have, th you have three pictures. If you have some issues with the slide deck, just write your ideas and later on you can, you can do it. Technological, pedagogical content knowledge, the TPAC, we talk about the content knowledge, the pedagogical knowledge, and the technological knowledge. But when they are, in this framework, they get all together in these three circles. In the center is the technological knowledge, technological, pedagogical, content knowledge. Why? 
most of the teachers are afraid to use technology while teaching because they are afraid they cannot use technology because they think technology is the only skill they need to teach. But this framework is telling you that everything you already know is important and everything you already know has to be connected with technology, okay? That's why sometimes when we choose some videos, and for us makes a lot of sense, this video, specific video. But when we are presenting to our students, our students are like, why this, is this video for? Why the teacher is asking us to see this? Because we are connecting the pedagogical and the content. We're missing the technology. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. That means that makes you evaluate the technology you use. In the for the future or for another class, you change the video. If the student didn't get the, the idea of the topic you want to teach because of the video didn't work, okay, you use another approach. That's why you have and you know how to teach something, okay? Because technology is not everything, okay? If technology doesn't work, you have your own pedagogy. You, you know how to teach the content. So don't be afraid to explore new technologies. Don't be afraid to, to share your methodologies. And sometimes feel free to use your own methodologies. Oh, it's not written in any book. Okay, start writing your methodologies. Maybe your own methodology is the best and I don't know. So try to write it down and share it with your friends, share it with your uh, coworkers at school and the content. The more you know about the content, the better it is to choose the methodology and the technology. So after these three circles or the content areas are connected, we create this. So this the interaction between those three, we have this one. Pedagogical content knowledge or PCK. This is okay. How the peda the content, I'm sorry, the pedagogy. We are going to talk about this one, okay? Pedagogical and content. Okay, we are here down. How the content, how vocabulary about family, okay. It's connected with the methodology I'm using. Okay. That is called pedagogical content knowledge. Okay, your content and your pedagogy or your methodologies. Okay, so it's how you will teach that specific content. Sometimes it's hard to teach some specific grammar for our Spanish speakers. And I had the opportunity to take one class how to teach Spanish, and I realized how difficult it is to teach Spanish to non-Spanish speakers some specific word that we just know. But we don't. I, I, it was really hard for me to, to explain it. I know the content, but I am missing the methodology. Okay, or maybe I know the methodology how to teach English, but I'm not sure about the content in that specific area in Spanish. So the pedagogical content knowledge is how the content and the pedagogy or the methodologies are connected. And then we have technological content knowledge. So those two areas are interconnected right here. The technological content knowledge is, in, is to understand, is the understanding of how certain technologies, okay, work very well with specific content, okay? or how this content can be influenced by using this specific technology. For example, if you use TED Talks to improve our students' listening, it can be used for speaking and writing. But how do you know? How do you know it's working? Because you know, you, you know the, the technology, you have explored TED Talks and you know your content. Okay, how the content is related with the video, how the content can help the students to understand it. The, the, uh, the videos can, can help the students to understand the content. If you are teaching science, how a soccer match can explain science. 
you can find very good videos about soccer matches and science that can be used as a technology and content, how they all together, okay? So you know about the technology, you explore the technology, and you know the content. And the third one is the technological pedagogical knowledge. The technological pedagogical knowledge is how, okay, the content, okay, is connected with the TED Talk. And how the content and the TED Talk can be taught at the beginning of the class, in the middle of the class, with direct questions, just listening exercises. What is the best methodology to have this video connected with this content and the students can understand? So this is the technological pedagogical knowledge, okay? How teaching and learning can change when particular technologies are used in particular ways. That's why sometimes technology doesn't work in every topic, the same technology cannot work in another group. So if you know your students and you know the content, you know what technology is the best for your students. So that is your technological pedagogical knowledge. You know the methods, you know the technology. If you don't know the technology, you explore, you play with it, then you use it. So after this, I want you to have one more minute okay, and choose one picture and add that picture in your slide. What is your strength here? What is your strength? Just one. It is your pedagogical content, content knowledge your strength? Is it technological content knowledge your strength? Or is your technological pedagogical knowledge your strength? Which one is your strength? Just choose a picture. If you write, notes, write your notes. I'm asking you this because I remember I started using technology in my classes to teach English and I didn't know that there are some theories and, and ways of organize the class with the technology. So I want you to choose what, what is your strength here? Because based on that is what you need to work in the future. If my strength is in the pedagogical content knowledge, I know the content and I know how to teach it. So the next step is to explore technologies. And then you are close to develop one of the best classes in the future. But if your strength is in the technological content knowledge, you know the content and you know the technology that can be used, but you are missing some methodologies. Okay, go back to the notes of did didactic one and two in some other classes you have taken and explore the new methodologies. There are new methodologies coming, okay? Um, there is one in particular that uh, holds all my attention and, and I want you to, to be curious about the new methods of teaching, okay? Because we have to in, include the own student's culture while they are le learning a second language. So it's a contextualized approach the contextualized approach will help you to understand more about the technology and the content in this time. If your strength is in the technological pedagogical knowledge, it means you know the methods and you know technology, but the content, okay, it's missing how to teach advanced grammar, okay? The content is, is tricky sometimes. So what do I need now? read a little bit more about the content, read how is the best approach to teach that content. And then that, that's gonna be your, uh, your T-Pack ready. So the three areas are connected and they become other three. So now we have six in three. And the last one is the T-Pack. So when you know the content, you know the methodologies and you know the technology and you know how they interact with you, then you are working with TPAC. You say, oh, I knew it, I know. I have been using it, but I didn't know how. Is it, I didn't know it has a name. So now, you know, it has a name, it goes TPAC, okay? All of those three areas are interconnected. That doesn't mean it's just one framework to teach with technology integration. We have more, 
But my particular point of view, feedback helped me to evaluate every time I use technology, every time I teach something, I evaluate myself to improve. Every time you teach something, try to evaluate yourself. Don't be afraid to ask your students if they like it or not. If they didn't like it, that's why. It's nothing wrong to other students, okay? So TPAC is to understand how to use technology to teach concepts in a way that enhances students' learning experiences. All the things you know, all the process of being an English teacher, science teacher, math teacher, or history teacher, all that process is important. It's important the content you know, and it's important technology. So it's not just one, it's not just technology important. If technology is missing, you have other two, okay? But if you have all those three together, your students will be happy with your classes. And hopefully you will be scaffolding students learning as you are also learning. The good thing about this time where we are trying to teach online classes while we were not used to is that teachers are now students. And sometimes that makes us so nervous. I remember the first two, like I think three weeks, the first three weeks I started doing online classes. I was so stressed and nervous and the students didn't participate. And, and I was like, what is going on? But then I realized I was part of the process. The students are learning and I am learning at the same time. So we, were, we are in the time with that it's so valuable because you are a student and a teacher at the same time in this process of education and technology. So I hope TPAC can help you plan your lessons with these meaningful ideas. I know some of you or most of you have used this without knowing the name, but now you can say, and I want you to start saying the names of your methodologies, the names of your frameworks, what you are teaching and how Okay, because you are professionals and we are professionals yes? and, and let's make this community of English teachers to, to interact okay? as professionals and share what you explore and what works for you and for your students and give it to someone next to you. you see what I did, just share. That's how we work, we, we grow. How to use this framework in your classrooms? Hmm. Now it's another exercise for you to work on your slide deck. You can write there your ideas, but you can also write somewhere in your lessons class, okay? And I will ask you some questions and we, I would like you to, to think, okay? Now you have some pictures there that represent your content, your pedagogical knowledge and your technological knowledge. And also you have a picture that represents your strength in these three, okay? So now, how? How do we use this in our lesson plans? Because we have this warm attractivity and um, we have to talk about competences and, we have the content, the activities, the evaluation. Okay, it doesn't matter the plan you are using. Okay, you can incorporate actually this framework in your plan. Okay, it's not to change the plan you are using or you are used to. It's for you to start thinking to evaluate what technology to use. And they are also connected with the lesson plan. And the lesson plan, if you start with the lesson plan, you know what is the topic, you know what you know what the topic is, and you know what the objective of the class will be. You know how to evaluate. Sometimes, okay, I also learned something new this semester that it, it really helped me a lot. I, I felt guilt when I used to plan and I wrote the objectives of the competences at the end okay, of the lesson. Plan. I mean, not at the end, but 
I write the content, the activities, and all the things I imagined the class will be. And after that, I wrote the competence of objectives. And I was like, I, I won't say to anyone, okay? Because I learned it has to be the first. But now I know there is a new framework that is called the backward framework. That is actually what I was doing. I didn't know it. someone already wrote about it. And that's why, don't be afraid to explore, to, to, to make your own classes for your students, okay? There are a lot of theory. There are a lot of professors, teachers saying, do this, this, that. But what about your students? What about your context? What languages do students talk? Do they talk? Do they speak Kachikel? Do they speak Kiche? Are you using Mayan languages while you are teaching English? What is the context they are living? So how to incorporate the framework, this TPAC framework? I have some questions for you to, to answer. You can write the answers by using pictures, words, or just in silence to yourself. Content knowledge. What are you teaching? What is your own knowledge of the subject? Okay, what are you teaching? Yeah, you, you have it in your plan. Pedagogical knowledge. How do your students learn best? And what instructional strategies do you need to meet their needs? And the requirements of the lesson plan. Remember, student-centered. The lesson is here, the student is here. So you need to think about those two things, okay? This is the content, this is the methodology, but the, the most important thing in the classroom is the student, okay? Oh yeah, we have a lot of tests. We need to show our principle, the results of the test. It's fine, but don't forget about the student. Okay? The students are the most important thing. So try to answer these questions. You can use pictures of your notes. And technological knowledge. What digital tools are available to you? Oh, this one is good, but I need to pay. Don't use it. There are others. They are free. Oh, I don't use this one because it's so complicated. Explore it. Take more time. If you cannot work in that one. Sometimes we, use, we try to use technology the day before we are teaching something. We, we need to explore, we need to practice, we need to show someone else before we are teaching with that specific technology. Uh, so what digital tools? We have a lot right now, so choose the best for you. Okay? You can hear hundreds of tools, but choose the best for you and your students' needs. Imagine in the public schools, we don't have platforms. The students don't have computers, but they have Facebook. How Facebook can be technological tool? Huh. That's how I have this philosophy of technology can be everything. So most of the teachers are frustrated because they don't have a Google Classroom. My students, they don't have, they don't have access, they don't have internet. But most of your students will be using Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. And I have seen a lot of teachers teaching on TikTok, languages, grammar, reading and writing in one minute and a half. I know one person said, I just thought the quality of education. Okay, remember, the students we have right now, they belong to a different generation and they are exploring technology more and more every day than you are doing right now. So try to think about your students. So don't just focus on one specific technology. Explore the ones that are available for your students, okay? And which will be uh, what technology is appropriate for the lesson. Okay, I will leave, I will leave these questions there for a while while you are taking notes or you are writing or you are taking uh, choosing some of the pictures. Okay, so try to write these questions for you and answer. And if you see, those are already answered in your lesson plans. But we need to argument why this technology can be used. Okay, one of the advices I give you is, for example, in the lesson plan, we write YouTube video, Google Classroom, Flipgrid. But why? Why are you using it? So it's good to write it down in your lesson plan because at the end, when you are one way, your process, you see, I use this technology because of this, but I didn't, it didn't work. So for 
the next lesson plan, I will use it in a different way. So try to write a why. Why you are you using this technology? Okay, we move a little bit forward. Then we have the other three. Okay, remember we have three, and when they are together, they make other three. So the pedagogical content knowledge is understanding the best practice for teaching specific content to your specific students. I can have students here which are living a totally different experience from your students' life. So try to think about that. Try to think about your students. What is the reality in your students? Okay. You see my, the reality of my students, okay. They yeah, don't have this thing. Do they have WhatsApp? Can they use WhatsApp? How WhatsApp can be used as a speech practice or speaking practice and listening in a very interactive way. Um, okay, so we have the pedagogical content is understanding the best practices for teaching. What is the best methodology for my students? Okay. Some students need to use translation. And we said, no, you don't have to speak Spanish here. And you know that one of the most famous approaches to teach a second language now in Canada and the United States is to use their first language to learn a second language. What does that mean? We are always saying we don't use translations here. We use context. Okay? How do they say that in your house? How do they say that in your family? How do you celebrate it? Imagine we are multicultural and we are not just one specific thing. So when you think about your methodologies, think about that. Think about the student context, the technological content, how interact, okay, the technological and the content. So knowing how the digital tools are available for you to transform the content, okay? How this tool can make this content better, okay? Is it pictures better just the photocopies, do we have some videos to learn vocabulary? What if we watch a movie to learn vocabulary? Uh, what if we just ask students to take pictures and have a pictures session outside and, and bring their own pictures online and show the vocabulary? Some of the students will enjoy the picture. Oh, they don't have ca uh, professional cameras. They have their cell phones. They can use the cell phones. The other one, and the last one, here is the technological pedagogical knowledge is how you use the technology with your methodologies, okay? It's understanding how to use your digital tools as a way, okay? As a connection to those competences, okay? You were writing. Remember the competences are connected with the evaluation tools you will use and how this technology is connected with this and that, how this technology will help the outcomes, okay? Write it down. You can choose pictures to remember this framework. You can write some words to remember this framework. Okay, I give you some time. And when there's these three circles and their interactions are all together, the center of the TPAC is, and the objective of the TPAC is to have interactive activities in your class. Okay. If for myself, everything can be technology, imagine. Imagine what else can be technology in your classes if you don't have a computer in your class or your students don't have a computer. Think about it. Teaching for understanding. Don't teach just for tests. Okay, teach for the test because they are asking you to show parents and the Ministry of Education results. But try to plan your classes for understanding. Understanding goes beyond that classroom, that specific topic with that specific group. 
teaching for understanding means that students know how to use that specific content in a specific real life experience. And that's what we do in English. Yes, I know. But we need to change the motivation of our students. Why are students in the public schools, they are taking English classes? I will say that they, we learn English in primero, segundo, tercero, básico. How many students actually learn English? No, because the student, no, because the system, no, because we, we, can, we can have a lot of answers or excuses. But if you are going to teach just one year, that specific group, try to teach the students for understanding. For understanding that you need to bring those content, your methods, and the technology, okay, for students to use that outside. Not just for the test. Not just because we have a test on Friday, guys. We have a test. Remember, this is coming in the test. Try to use real life experiences. How those situations in real life can be handled by this content. How this methodology can help students to know and experience this real life situation. How this technology can show students these social problems and to solve those problems. Okay. How can we teach social justice while we are teaching grammar? How can we teach about saving the world, recycling, by teaching grammar and writing? Your methodologies, your content, and your technology has to be taught. Okay? They have to be taught for understanding, not just for the test. And the students will understand, okay? I don't know how many of you learn English in primero, segundo, tercero, básico. I remember I have just one. I think we have a couple of classes in primero, básico, and I remember the dialogues because I memorized them, but they, they didn't make sense. I, I have them here. I know, but they didn't make sense. They didn't, I, they didn't understand them. In segundo, básico, I didn't have English because there were not teachers there for English classes. And then in the third grade, uh, tercero básico, sorry. Tercero básico, we, I was asking for an English teacher and they sent us one at the end of the school year. Then we learned some vocabulary. Then I was happy to learn some vocabulary. But don't blame the students, don't blame the system when we are asking you, are you teaching English to your students in primero, segundo básico? If you don't, have the whole content, okay? You don't, you don't have time to teach the whole content that the curriculum national base is asking you. Choose the best for the students in that specific content, that specific context. Okay. Conclusions and questions. So what the authors of this framework, Coloring Mistra says about this specific tip framework is that Part of good teaching with technology are three core components, content, pedagogy, and technology. Plus, the relationships among and between them. So try to find these relationships to make your classes interactive in teaching for understanding. We go back to the presentation. And Rosie will help me to read some of the uh, questions you will ask or have. You have more questions. We can interact with the questions. So we are going to have some time for questions and answers. Sure, perfect. Thank you so much for such a great conference, Master Palala. I have some questions already. 
And to our dear audience, you can continue posting them live in YouTube and I will be reading them, okay? So the first question that we have is, how do hey students that are not related with technology? We know you mentioned about Facebook and WhatsApp, but what if they don't know about technology and you get them as a group? Um, this is an interesting question because sometimes we assume students don't know about technology. And as I was telling you at the beginning, what is the definition of technology for you and the students? And I think it is important to start asking the students themselves, okay, about the technology they know. Because sometimes we assume, we assume. And, and they know some technology. Maybe they don't have digital technology, but they have technology at home. They, they used to take water out of the, um, the well. That can be technology. Okay. Some, some students are familiar with technology without knowing it. Okay. So as a teacher, we need to lead them to explore definitions and, con and concepts about technology. And, and I'm pretty sure they will know at least something about technology. They will have radio, small TV. If they don't have it at home, they might have seen. If you as a teacher think that the students don't know about technology, it's because you are assuming or it's because you ask, ask, ask them about it. So before assuming, Let's have the conversation with your students and let's explore. I, my only answer is explore with your students, ask them. No, because at this time, okay, now it's like, oh, it's late, right? <laughs> but everything hopefully will be back, not as a new normal, but try to explore that. Try to, that's why I, I, I was asking you and telling you to think about the students, okay, context. What is the technology they know? Based on what they have, based on what they know, classes. Excellent, thank you. We have another question that says, what platforms do you recommend for teaching online nowadays? What platforms? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the followers. I had the chance to explore technologies in education for Microsoft, Google, and Mac. And I think they're the most accessible one is Google. And even if you don't have Google Classroom and you don't have any experience about it, you can use Google Drive to do your uh, classes. Actually, I'm using Google Slide because it's, it's, it can be complicated if you don't know, but it's not expensive. Okay, and difficult to use. So I, I'm not gonna tell you use this, this, and this. I'm gonna ask you to start exploring, okay? Try to explore Google tools. If you want me to give you more specific details about the technology to use in the classroom, uh, I will ask uh, Rosie to share my email and you can send me a an email after the conference and I will send you some of the uh, technologies I will ask you to explore. And then you choose, choose the best for you and your students. In my case, I use Google. Thank you, Rosie. Okay, thank you. And we have another question. It says, what about if your students don't like English? What can you do? It's a good question. And I think I, I have heard that from primero, segundo, tercero, básico, and students from bachillerato. Yes, they don't like English, and we will have students who don't like math. We will have students who don't like Spanish. We're going to have students that they don't like other subjects, science. Okay. How do we handle that? It's not just a, it's not just about English. Okay. Have you ever thought about it? Do you like mathematics? 
you don't like it, how did your teacher handle that? It's interesting. When you go back to your uh, school experience, we had some classes that we didn't like, okay? And most of our students don't like, don't like a second language because it can be cultural, okay? It's like an invasion of their own culture and it's okay. If they don't like it, they need to know why not. Because some students, I know they don't like English because they don't want to speak the language of someone outside their country. And it's okay. But we need to ask again, what are our students' needs? Why these students don't like English? And sometimes we don't have the time. I know we have 45 students. Why are you asking me this? I don't have time to ask every student why they don't like it. Okay. You don't know why they don't like it. Now, your assignment is to choose the best methodology for those who don't like English. And that's the challenge. That's why we become teachers. Not because of the one they like a specific subject. We were so happy to have all the students liking the class. Okay? But always remember those students who don't like the class. And remember about the students who don't understand from the beginning. They will be asking you questions and be patient with them. So one of the challenges I will give you is to ask them why. And if not, start exploring which methodologies are good for the students who don't like English. And why? Is it cultural? Is it because the cultural approach? Is it because what they have heard in, the ha in their houses, in their homes, or community, what is it? And it's a very good question, and I wish I could have a good answer for that one. But I will just tell you to think about it, to think about which methodology I can use today to teach to that student that don't like English, okay? They don't like English, but they like music, maybe singing, okay, let's sing, okay? They don't like singing, they like writing. But they like, okay, right. They like drawing, let's draw in English. Use everything, puppets, use painting, okay? Go outside the box to teach English, okay? That students are not you as a teacher because you like this methodology, okay? Use, explore, you are a box of surprises and be a surprise for your students in every class you have because they will be expecting you. What is he bringing or she bringing today? And you have a surprise for them. Make those classes meaningful for the student, not for you. Thank you, Rosa. Excellent, thank you. The next question is, if my student doesn't have internet, do you consider a good idea to give them worksheets to do? You know that worksheets are also technology. <laughs> If we, go, if we go back to, to, the, to your own philosophy of technology, yeah. remember like years back, back in time, if you go to the Mayan you know, culture, they didn't have papers. <laughs> and now the technology they have, they were rocks. They were writing on rocks. That was the technology in that time. But then paper became popular and now paper is technology. And why now worships can be work as a technology? Okay, and in, that's my opinion. I mean, I'm not, I'm not here to change the way you think about technology, but use the best, okay, resources you have for your students. If worksheets work for your students, make the best worksheets for your students. Make the most beautiful worksheets for your students, okay? If you don't have anything else, I don't have a video, okay? This worksheet has to be the best for that specific student. Yeah, I'm not against worksheets. If my students don't have technology, I have to use worksheets, but they need to be the best worksheets the student will have. Okay, it's not just copy and paste and download it. No, create your own. Work on them. Make them personalize them, the, the, these worksheets, okay? That you care about them. Ask some students to your students, okay? Ask some questions to your students. How are you? How do you feel? The worships are there. You are taking care of your students, even in a worship. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so we have 
other questions, but I think we are going to share your email so that they can directly because they are kind of what you just said. So I think maybe if they have other questions, they can just let them go to you directly. Okay, so so our dear audience, TTS conference, the official fan page is going to be sharing the email from Master Palala. And we thank you so much for your time and for such a wonderful conference. I believe everyone learned a lot and all the comments, you can read them as well. They are really thankful for your time and for your experience and for everything that you shared with us today. Thank you, Rosy. So right now for our audience, I am going to be sharing in TTS conference as well. You asked about registration. So I'm going to be sharing a link. That is the link for the registration process. And you can fill it in. We are going to leave it open until 4.30. And there you write your name and make sure to put it correctly because that's the way it's going to go to your diploma. And also it has an evaluation for the conference and the speaker. So we will be really thankful if you could fill it in. So remember, this has been the conference TPAC, a dynamic framework for technology integration in the classroom. At five, we have another pouring from an empty cup, teachers and self-care in this channel and a different one in our other channel, Idioma Susak. So thank you so much, Master Palala, and thank you everybody for seeing the conference today. Well, see, thank you everyone behind this particular online TTS. Thank you for all your work. Thank you everyone who is participating as well. And the slide deck is open. You can continue. And I will make some comments. You can ask me questions directly there. And I will also comment to those slides. Okay, I will try to comment and give some specific comments to everyone. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate the invitation. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you. Have everybody then a wonderful day. And please fill in the registration. <laughs>